Before we begin this morning, I'd like to have another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask, Lord, that you would be with me this morning here as I break the bread of life to our brothers and sisters here. Have your Holy Spirit guide my mind and my words. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever stepped out onto what looks like solid ground only to find that it wouldn't bear your weight? I think some of us have. Perhaps a tangle of grass and bushes hid swampy. You're going to have to excuse me a minute. Once in a while this happened, I get a little dizziness here when I stand up too fast. I shouldn't have stand up too fast. So bear with me. And uh, it'll, yeah, it, it goes away pretty fast. So. They told us in the Air Force, don't lock your knees when you're standing at attention. We had one guy there that did that every time. He had more knots on his head. He'd go over frontwards, he'd go, oops, excuse me, he'd go over backwards. It was horrible. And I, one of the things I did while I was in the service was cut hair. And it was really hard making his hair look good with all those knots on his head. So, see, that gives me a little chance to share a story. So. It's starting to clear up, hang in there. You're still moving, dear. I asked my wife, one time, what, what's going on when this happened? And she said, well, your eyes are oscillating. I said, that's kind of cool, isn't it? So I never, uh, I think I've asked the doctor several times about what causes that. I don't know. So. I said, well, you're still a practicing physician, right? I said, I'll come back and see you when you get it down right, and you're done practicing. <laughs> okay, perhaps a tangle of grass and bushes hid the swampy ground underneath. If you've had that experience, you can understand how important it is to stand on firm ground. A popular site for tourists visiting Canada's eastern provinces is a beach called the Hopewell Mud Flats. Has anybody been back there and seen that? The Hopewell Mud Flats? I haven't either. I was back there. Thank you very much. I got one here too. So, located not far from the famous tides on the Bay of Fundy, this unusual beach offers a broad expanse of what you might at first think is firm, inviting sand. But when you go to step out there on it, you sink right down. Now it says you can walk quite a ways there and you'll sink, it says up to your knees or above that. Now I don't think that's very much fun. Maybe you guys would like to do something like that. But uh, I kind of like having my feet on firm ground. So, and we're doing it again. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to do fine on time. Okay. Pardon? Would you like to sit and speak from sitting? I think once we'll try it this way and then see. Yeah, I may have to hear. I don't know if that makes any difference. Anyway, it's fun to visit a spot like this when you're a tourist looking to see a unique natural phenomenon. But what if you came upon the mud flats unprepared? What if you were traveling on foot trying to get somewhere in a hurry and found the ground shifting beneath your feet, thick mud pulling at your feet, sucking you down, not being able to get a firm foothold when you need one? can be a terrifying experience. Psalms 42, let's turn there. Oops. Psalms 40, verse 2. The psalmist here is praising God, okay? Psalms 40 and verse 2. 
He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. Isn't that what we long for? A firm place to stand? Yet all too often our feet seem to be slipping and sliding in the mud and the mire. Standing firm isn't easy and it isn't popular either. We live in a society where our news is reduced to sound bites our meals can be microwaved in five minutes or less and picked up from a drive through window. Every evening we can sit in front of the television to watch complex human dramas solved in 30 or 60 minutes. We have come to expect instant solutions, quick answers, and an easy way out. We've kind of been programmed folks, haven't we? But real life isn't like that. Most of the time, life presents us with difficult situations that don't get solved in 30 minutes minus commercials. Most real life problems require us to stand firm, to hold our ground, to take the time needed to find a solution or wait for an answer. And our culture doesn't encourage us to stand firm. All too often, the results of our quick fix mentality can be tragic. I'm going to share an example here. A teenage boy is going through a difficult time in his life. He seems to always be in conflict with his parents and in trouble at school. His mother would love to help him, but she can't get through his unhappiness to reach him. Though the problems of adolescence, and here we go again. Boy, that's it. I never had this long this time before. But then I don't. Sit down there. You got a mic there? I'm sorry. You can't all see me from over here. Okay. So we'll think twice before we ask Wayne to speak again, okay? <laughs> hey, no, give me a few fine. moments. It's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Everything's cool. Why well, we got a nurse out there to start my friend. I'm medically trained, so that's okay. Oh. So is everything going okay with everybody? Yeah, it's coming. How are you doing, Wayne? I'm doing great. Yeah. The Lord is good. And I ate good breakfast this morning. I don't know. Okay. Through the problems of adolescence that plague him are only temporary, they seem never ending to him. Uh, how many of you growing up in school were ever bullied? or You don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, I, I've been through that too. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to have mom at home when you get out of school. Anyway, one day his mother arrives home to an eerily silent house. No radio blaring in the upstairs bedroom, though his jacket and shoes are in the hall. She moves towards his room with a sudden feeling of dread and discovers the thing she's feared most, her son's dead body inside next to a note that reads sorry mom and dad i just couldn't take it anymore you know we've got a large problem with our teenagers these years in committing suicide and it's really sad and it's not only teenagers there's so many that are searching for something and they they can't find it the young man felt the ground shifting under his feet. To him, perhaps, it felt like an earthquake. All he wanted was quick release from his pain, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. If only he had known how to stand firm. A young couple married just a few years 
finds the joy in their marriage slipping away. As they struggle to balance the responsibilities of small children, jobs, and housekeeping, they have no time to enjoy each other's company. Small annoyances grow into constant irritation. They snap and snipe at each other. One day, the husband returns home to find his wife and children gone. A terse phone call later that evening, evening informs him that she's gone to stay with a friend. Don't bother calling, she says. You'll hear from my lawyers. I just can't handle this stress any longer. I had to get out. You know, I think our divorce rate in this Adventist church is caught up with the world now. And that's sad, folks. It shouldn't be that way. Countless happy older couples could have told that young wife that they'd weather storms every bit as bad and even worse. They managed to stay together by standing firm, holding to their commitment until they found a solution. If only that young couple had had the courage to stand firm. Yes, indeed, the consequences of not standing firm can be tragic. Mud and mire around our feet can indeed drag us down into that horrible pit. The Apostle Paul compared our struggles in this life to the position of a soldier in battle facing a powerful opponent. As the enemy nears with sword in hand, the temptation is to retreat, to fall back. But once the soldier does, the enemy will press his advantage and defeat him. The only hope for the soldier is to stand his ground and continue to fight despite his fear, despite his weakness, and the enemy's strength. The time has come for him to trust his armor and stand firm. And this is where we'll bring in Ephesians 6, 13 to 14, which we've already read. And I'm going to skip over it because we know what that is, the whole armor of God. We live in a culture that glorifies the quick fix the instant solution, yet at the same time, ironically, our culture also glorifies tough, macho, standalone heroes. Right, Jim? You gotta be tough. Men of steel who don't need anyone to back them up, but can face adversity in their own strength. Men who can tough it out, stand firm no matter how hard the going gets. These individuals are admired in the movies, on television, and in comic books, but we seem to meet very few of them in real life. I didn't, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's because we worship the cult of the rugged individual, the lone wolf, the hero who walks alone, that we see so many people giving up in despair rather than standing through adversity and hardship. We've all been indoctrinated with the idea that we must go it alone or not at all. That is a weakness to ask for help or support. So when we face difficulty and realize that we're not Superman or Wonder Woman, we feel there's no other choice but just to give up in despair. Any Wonder Women or Supermen out there? That's a falsehood. One of the many lies our society has taught us, God's word contests that theory. In God's term, it's not a weakness or a failure to ask for help. In fact, it's a necessity, isn't it? It's a necessity. We will not succeed. We will what? We will not succeed. We cannot exceed until we have placed ourselves in God's hands and become dependent on him. We cannot stand firm in our own two feet. We can only stand firm in the footsteps of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 21. If you want to turn, you can. For even hereunto were you called 
because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now this doesn't mean that we copy Jesus and try to do what he did to face sufferings the way he did. Yes, that's part of it, but it's only part. And if we're trying to imitate Jesus in our own strength, and how many of us haven't done that, huh? We all tried that, I'm sure. I don't know about you, but I've tried that. But anyway, we're sure to fail. Because let's face it, I'm not the divine son of God and neither are you. We are God's precious human children created in his image but dependent on him for the strength that we need to stand firm. We need to be injected with the blood of an overcomer or to put it more literally, we need to ask God for his divine power through the Holy Spirit to carry us through the times when we simply can't stand on our own. Have any of you been there? I think most of us have been there. So how do we get from the mud and mire, from the slimy pit up to the solid rock? Do we climb, clamor, scramble out of the mud ourselves? No, God lifts us from the mud and places our feet on the firm rock. Amen. It's a divine hand that holds us and makes us able to stand firm. I remember when my wife had left and I was in bed laying at night there by myself, I remember raising my hand and I knew God was there. He's going to lift you up, folks. He'll take you through whatever you're going through. Grab a hold. He's promised. Can you feel the mud surround your feet today? Is the ground shifting beneath as you as you face the earthquake of family breakdown? The mudslide of debt and financial ruin, the tremors of illness? Do you long for the inner peace that comes with knowing you have a solid ground under your feet. You need a firm place to stand. You need the commitment will to say, I am going to stand firm and not quit or run away. But you need one more thing. Beyond courage and determination, you need help from above. You need to reach out and place your hand in the hand of God who will lift you onto the solid rock. Amen. There you will find a place to stand. An old hymn says it best, and we're going to be singing that later. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We have a firm foundation. We have a solid rock. Don't let the shifting sand and slimy mud of difficulties and troubles pull you down. Keep your feet planted on Jesus the rock. You know, I think I skipped over one section here. I need to go back, okay? Because this is a good, good example. Dr. Paul Brand, a missionary doctor whose medical research, I didn't read this yet, whose medical research has transformed thousands of lives, told a powerful story that illustrates how we can stand firm. An epidemic of measles struck the lower India where the brands were working. As her older daughter fought the disease, they feared for their baby, especially vulnerable because of her age. They went in search of a serum drawn from the blood of someone 
who had had the measles and successfully recovered. They were looking for the blood of an overcomer. When they found it, the antibodies in that person's blood were able to help Dr. Brand's baby fight off the measles and remain healthy. The blood of an overcomer, that little girl survived not because of her own strength, but because someone else had already suffered, fought the battle, and overcome. That can be our experience too. We know someone who struggled with sin, despair, discouragement, and death. Jesus knew pain. He knew fear. He even knew the temptation to quit when he prayed alone in the garden on the night before he died. His heart was so anguished that he sweat great drops of blood. He begged his father to let him avoid this trial. Yet in the end, he went to the cross. He suffered not just the death of the body, but the second death, ultimate separation from God, so that we would not have to. When we accept Jesus as our Lord of our lives, we can be injected with the blood of an overcomer because he has fought the battle and we can stand our ground. We can stand firm. The Apostle Paul throws out a memorable challenge. Romans 8, you might want to turn there. Romans 8, verses 35 to 37. We all know this one. I still hear a few pages. Romans 8, 35 to 37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Wonderful promise. I want to be more than a conqueror, don't you? Through Jesus, we can do it. We can stand firm, whatever life throws at us.